Hello, my name is Michał Orzek and welcome to this workflow tutorial. Today I want to show you some of my techniques that I use when dealing with simple 3G objects in Unreal Engine 4. I'm going to use third-party plugin for Photoshop called Didu from Quixel. I'm gonna use this to create high-quality materials functions in Unreal Engine. Check also Quixel website for more info, I really recommend their products. Ok, let's gonna take a look on what we are gonna be working with. I use 3D Studio Max, but any other 3D application will work here. Alright, so we've got a very simple 3D model of an armchair. I've set two material IDs for multiple material. One ID is for wooden part, and the second one is for cotton seed. Now, let's take a quick look on the UVs. I try to get rid of any stretching or scale differences within one material ID when unwrapping this object. I won't show you how to do that since there are plenty tutorials on net. Now, let's apply a multi-sub object material. As you can see, it uses two standard materials as an input. It doesn't really matter what colors you choose. We're gonna use this material to bake our ID mask. Let's open up Render to Texture dialog. First, let's specify a path that we are gonna use for our baked maps. Then, make sure Enable Global Super Sampler is checked. I'm using Scanline Renderer at the moment. Close this up. Add a new output and choose Diffuse Map. It will just render an ambient color we set in multi sub object material without any lighting or shadowing information. Let's make it 1K by 1K. And also don't forget to check Render to File Only. We don't want to change source materials after rendering. Ok, now just hit Render. I've already done this before so I need to overwrite these files. Render should be relatively fast. As you can see in the preview window, We've got color with some shading going on. But when you open an output file in Photoshop, you'll see it looks ok. Alright, let's bake an object space normal map. So what we want to do is create a copy of this object. Let's give it a name. And hit ok. We're gonna use this copy for projection. Make sure you've got our original chair selected. Let's delete previous output element and let's add a normal map instead. Let's also increase the resolution. Normally I use 2K by 2K, but for purpose of this tutorial I'll choose a smaller one. Enable the projection mapping option and hit pick button. Now when add targets dialogs pops up, add a copy of our chair. We need to change normal map space to local XYZ. I left projection modifier settings as a default, so we are ready to bake normal map. Let's open this in Photoshop and see our result. Now we're gonna render an ambient occlusion map. I prefer to use mental ray as a renderer at this stage. I find this the fastest way to get a yo map. Ok, let's delete previous output map and let's choose ambient occlusion. Let's give it a name. Other thing I wanted to do is to increase the sample under selected element unique settings. It's gonna make our render less noisy. Type 64 for example and hit render. This will take a while, so I will pause the recording. Okay, our ambient occlusion map is ready. Let's open this in Photoshop. As you can see, it is still a bit noisy. You could apply a blur to smoothen this up, but I think it's okay for now. Let's open Quixel plugins and hit D icon. It's gonna open the do window. Ok, let's load our armchair 3D model and all textures we baked in 3D Studio Max to appropriate map slots. 
It can take a couple seconds to load, depending on texture resolution or your hardware. Please notice that we are not gonna load our object space normal map into a normal map slot. I'm just showing this in case you didn't notice this second slot. Let's increase texel density and choose output maps you want. We're gonna leave everything as a default. Let's also choose an output path for Didu project. Hit create base button. Alright, so we are ready to create materials. Quixel has a great 3D mesh preview called Freedo or Freedio, whatever is pronounced. Let's open this up and let's see if our mesh is ok. As you can see, AOMAP has been already applied. I'm gonna make this window smaller to better see what's going on. Ok, let's add a bare wood material. Didu will automatically load all maps into Photoshop. Freedo should now update. Ok, to me this wood texture is way too big, so I'm gonna tile this to have more details. Yeah, now it's better. What we are gonna do now is to specify a mask for this wood layer we just created. Remember that we loaded an ID mask? It tells Didu what regions of the texture will be used as a mask. Right click on a mask, which is white at the moment, and pick green color. Hit done. Now, we've got mask for wood layer. Ok, let's do the same with cotton seed. Open up material library and pick cotton. Let's increase the tiling again. Maybe that's too much. Feel free to experiment with these settings. Let's change the color of this layer. Red for example. You can also set the mask by clicking on a small square on the right. It's just another way of doing that. Alright, so our chair starts looking good. So, we've got two materials so far, but I want this chair to have more details, like it's not a brand new chair. So maybe let's add some dirt or stains to the seat. Let's add a clean layer. <laughs> yeah, clean layer to make things dirty. We're gonna create a mask from presets this time. Left click on a white square opens up a mask editor. Here you have a bunch of presets to play around with. I really recommend to check some of them before moving on. Names are quite descriptive. But before choosing one, I need to mask cotton seed as a starting point. And as you can probably guess, we're gonna use Material ID mask. Okay, now let's find a nice preset. I'm gonna use a big stain preset. Free do turn to mask preview mode, so we can now easily see our mask on a 3D mesh. Let's enable object space direction. Let's see what happens. Okay, cool. We've got stains on top of the seat, but I think it's too intense right now. Let's play around with these settings to get better result. Okay, that looks pretty neat. You get the idea of how you can control the mask. Hit done when you're ready. We're gonna change stains color to match up the cotton layer. Dark red will do the job. What I don't like here is the reflectivity of these stains. Looks too wet to me. I'm gonna decrease it by changing gloss color to darker one. Now it's better. Always rotate your mesh to see if there are no errors or weird things going on with the texture.
Let's change the HDRI map to see this model in a different environment. Press left-right arrow keys to do so. Ok, I am quite happy with the result, so let's now export all textures. I will create a subfolder and call it flat. Also, make sure you are using Unreal Engine 4 calibration profile. This will make roughness map to look appropriate. All textures have been saved to disk. Now, let's open Unreal Engine Editor and let's see what can we do. Ok, I've already imported 3D Mesh and all textures we baked in 3D Studio Max. I've also created a simple shader and applied it to our chair. Nothing really fancy. Now, let's take a look at a different shader that I made for material functions. There are some color differences, but it's not the case right now. We can adjust it later without any problems. The quality of the wood or cotton is much better on the second chair. Material functions give you more control over the shader in Unreal Engine. Let's open this shader and see what's going on there. I am using two material functions. Bare wood and cotton. I blend them together with standard blend node. It uses red channel from texture as a mask. As you can see, I've changed the colors to pure red and green to make mask easier to control in Unreal Engine. Also, blue channel was painted in Photoshop. It is used to create a mask for stains. Finally, I imported AO map and plugged it into AO layer blend node. So it's a quite simple setup. Material functions are even simpler. Let's take a look. Basically, you're gonna create a material function once. To make another material function, simply copy it and change the textures. These textures have been taken directly from Didu. I will show you how I export them in a minute. I have also taken roughness or a gloss texture as it is called in Didu and merge with Diffuse as an alpha channel. Textures from Didu are very high quality and what's more important, they are tileable. Alright, let me show you how easy it is to modify things when using material functions. Let's change seed color for example. Normally, you would need to back to Photoshop, open Didu and change color there. Then save all maps, reimport them in Unreal Engine 4 and so on. Here it's just a matter of few clicks. Ok, let's pick a different color. Green for example. The same is for the wood layer. It's really up to you what parameters you want to change. It doesn't have to be color, it could be a texture tiling which is also very helpful or even the roughness. Ok, let's back to original look. Ok, but you can ask me why should I waste time creating material functions, setting all these parameters, when I only want to have a nice looking 3D model done really quickly and I got this directly from Didu? So, the answer is, you won't waste your time when you have plenty of objects that use wood, cotton or any other material. Here's their example. Let's place a bench into a scene and apply bare wood material. With a proper UV setup, you have quite nice result. Of course, you can create unique material for this bench as we did with chair. This wood shader has been made of material function I showed you earlier. Now, let's jump back to Photoshop and I will show you how to export raw materials from Didu. Ok, let's open up a new Didu project, but this time we don't have to import anything into slots. Let's make sure we have selected all maps that we are going to use in Unreal Engine 4. Let's create a subfolder for our textures. Type a name, material functions underscore maps and hit OK. Click create base and set the resolution of an empty project. To be consistent with previous examples, we're gonna add the same materials. First, 
the wood material. Didu has imported everything into Photoshop as expected. We don't want to create any mask this time, so we are ready to export. We can also play around with material setting, but we are okay with default one. Let's give it a name and create another subfolder for our maps. I like things to be organized. Ok, here are all of the wood textures. Now, let's delete wood layer since it's already exported and add a cotton material. The process is the same. Let's change base name and set different path. And we are done. Now all we need to do is to import these textures into Unreal Engine 4 and create material functions. To sum up these examples, Didu is extremely handy when you want to prototype shaders, create parametric masks and so on. It's even more powerful when you create highly detailed complex textures or just work with a unique object. Material functions, on the other hand, provide you a fast way to apply shaders in Unreal Engine. They are also customizable almost in real time, so it really depends on assets you are creating. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, please leave a comment or just share your suggestion of what could be done better. And also, if you want to grab free content for Unreal Engine 4, visit our blog and check what we have there. There are some other tutorials, 3D assets and even this. Amazing 3D bucket. Yeah, see you next time.